and welcome to the second episode of Useless Meets, uh, where I'm joined by another special guest called Mr. George Savile. George, how you doing, mate? I'm good, buddy. How are you? Yeah, not bad, not bad. I'm really looking forward to this, so hopefully it'll be a, a, a good laugh. We'll get to see a different Sav that we haven't really seen before. Um, but before we begin, I just want to say massive congratulations. Obviously, you've become a father uh, recently, haven't you? So um, how's that been for you personally? Uh, being, you know, obviously a, a parent in terms of the impact it's made on your life. Yeah, it's unreal. Um, got a little girl, uh, six months now, so uh, been keeping me up. But now, obviously, every parent would say it's the best, best, best job in the world. Fantastic. Um, and um, is, is there anything that you thought you'd be as, as a parent um, that you basically found yourself like not sort of doing, if that makes sense? So for example, you might have thought, oh, I'll, I'll be a bit strict or I'll be a bit soft, but you find yourself being like, the opposite in terms of in, in, in that way as, as it surprised you parent that's what i'm trying to sort of um 24 7 yeah i mean i had two dogs but we got two dogs uh obviously before before winnie and um if you get bored of them you can just put them in the kitchen for a couple of hours and and, and move on but obviously when it's your daughter you can't really stick her in the kitchen and so i'm having a break can you <laughs> of course of course exactly so that's so, all yeah. good 24 7 yeah, no, that sounds that sounds very very good. Um, so obviously, been at the borough for three years now. Uh, yeah. You joined in um, twenty eighteen, um, and obviously each season you've had a different uh, manager. Obviously, you had uh, Pulis in the first season, uh, Woodgate second season, and then Warnock um, this season. What what would you say has been the difference in each um, season and, and styles of football for you personally? Um, well, I'd obviously say uh, this season's probably been my better one. Um, obviously, the first season under Pulis was um, I was I was I came in a bit late. I think I was like six or eight games. Was it six or eight games in? Yeah, I think I was like six or eight games in. Um, so it took me a while to find my feet. Um, and I, I was playing different positions. I remember under Pulis, I was playing but yeah, I was playing left wing back, left back, left mid. Um, so I think consistency this year has been uh, the key for me. Um, obviously, Gaffer's um, playing me in a role I enjoy, and um, you know I've done I've done quite well in that in that role this season. So, what what, what would you say has been the difference then under say um, Woodgate um, and and now? Because obviously it's virtually the same squad. Yeah, there's a few different additions, but what would you say has been the main uh, difference? Not just for you personally, but for the whole squad. Uh, difference, I would say, obviously. <clears throat> Uh, the gaffer, uh, the gaffer now, his experience um, has probably helped us massively. Obviously, being a young squad, we haven't, we haven't got as many senior pros as, as we did under Pulis and, and Woodgate. Um, I've said it before as well in, in, in interviews. His man management on, on boys, um, it's obviously clear to see the likes of you know Bowler and Dyke still. Um, them boys are just different players under him, um, and he's and he's got us going. He's got the boys going, um, and. It's, it, I'm not saying it wasn't a happy camp beforehand, but uh, you see a good morale around the building here now. Um, it's upbeat, it's training's positive, um, and, and we're in a good place. Obviously, he came in with the eight games left last season, and we, and we did well. And we, <clears throat> I think, our form in those eight games, I think we were sixth or seventh if if, if you just done it off those eight games. So obviously, coming into this season, we were confident, um, and it was a fresh start for the boys. Um, so, yeah, I think the big difference is players, him getting the best out of players. I think that's a big difference this year. Obviously, he spoke about, you know, having a bit of, sort of trouble sort of settling in and stuff. But also, the first time they actually moved up north, because if you think about it, you've been at Brentford, Millwall. Um, I think you had a loan spell at I think Bristol City and you had a little short spell at uh, Wolves as well. But they're all quite like southern based clubs, if you like, or Midlands. Um, how difficult was that to move to a club so far north? Because obviously you haven't got any family around, um, how, you know, in terms of settling in, like what what part of, the, you know, Teesside did you move up to? And how, how, how was that for you personally? Um, it's different, obviously. You just got to, you just got to adjust. Um, obviously, when there was interest in me, I, there was, it was a no brainer. Like I wanted to come to Middlesbrough. I was, I was desperate to come here and, I spoke to the manager at Millwall and stuff, and I was just like, oh, I want to play for Middlesbrough. It's an unbelievable football club. I want to give it a go. So I never once thought, oh, it's a bit far. Like, I wanted to be here. I came here. And I don't regret anything. Um, 
it takes it, you've got to adjust and it's difficult obviously being away from me but i always think to myself there's always someone else in a worse position than you so no point complaining about it or, or whatever you go again with it sometimes it's hard but it's just like life now in pandemic everyone's in a horrible situation and there's much worse things in life than me being four and a half hours from home so i wasn't complaining and it was it, it was what it is so obviously it helps when the football's going better um so when you're playing well you're in the team everything else sort of seems to take care of itself um and then when you're not in the team you think more mentally it's difficult um and you probably rely on things um to help you get out of those difficult difficult days um but for me now obviously I've got my family here I've got my little daughter um so yeah i'm in a really good place yeah, no, that obviously sounds um, great um, um, in terms of the fact that you've used it as a sort of positive um, sense. So what would you say has been like the major differences then between, uh, you know, living up north and, and, and down south? Um, it's slower. I would say it's more peaceful. Um, it's nice. It's, it's completely different. Yeah, it's nice. It's, it's quiet. You, I feel like you've got more time in the day. Um, people are more polite obviously london and stuff it's just you walk past each other head down no one really cares <laughs> up here you go into the spa or whatever and it's like hi how are you how's your day it's it's nice yeah so um we're, we're happy i like it up here i live on on rockcliffe probably shouldn't tell everyone that but yeah i do <laughs> um we've got a few of us um in that community um in the houses so there's a few of the lads that live there um, and we enjoy it. We, we enjoy it, especially the uh, golf course as well, when that yeah. reopens. Now yeah, that obviously sounds um, great. And obviously, uh, you spoke about a few of the lads living sort of close to each other. Um, Mr. Neil Warnock, the gap has said in his uh, press conference recently that you're one of his neighbours. Um, how 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 how's that how's that been being, you know, close um, to, to 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 the gaffer? Yeah, he does my head in, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? It's, is what it is um it's no different yeah it's fine like uh he's obviously he's got his he's got his wife up here with he's got two dogs as well um so between obviously the humans we're all good but obviously when the dogs get out in the garden they they're at each other at the fence so <laughs> i think that's the only problem the only problem we have so the first one is from peter lee rogers and, and he asks is Warnock um, the factor? Um, is, is the Warnock factor the big reason for your goals, your work rate, and your overall form? Uh, yeah, you could say so. I mean, um, the manager put trust in me this season. It's played me in a position I want to be playing, position that I've shown before, and I have other clubs I can play there. And, um, I can get to the best out of me. So obviously, playing in, in the number eight. Um, I wouldn't say I'm a, a number 10, but I wouldn't say I'm a holding midfield. I'd say I'm an out and out 10. I work hard, press well, do, do my very best for the team and, and pop up with a goal. So I think I've shown that this year. Um, and the manager's kind of left me to do that role, um, which obviously has worked well for me. And obviously you found yourself out the team in the last sort of few games. Um, how, how does it make you like react? So obviously, you, like you said, you've had the best season so far. You're one of our top goal scorers in the team. But obviously, um, we signed, you know, the likes of Mendes Lang, Cabano. We've changed a system back to a wing back um, system recently. How does it make you sort of feel when you see yourself out of the team? Does it make you think that's harsh, you know, or does it make you think I'm going to work hard to, you know, show the gaffer that I should be starting week in week out? Yeah, it's, it's difficult. Any any footballer would tell you guys like it's hard when you come out of the team. Obviously, especially the first part of the season was going really well for the club and me personally um but this year's been difficult we've had saturday tuesday saturday tuesdays physically really demanding and um i think we played the brentford game at home when we when we lost and i had a few chances that game that i should be scoring um especially with the goals i had already scored this season i would have fancied myself but obviously they didn't go in and then we've lost the game and then we played derby and i had I had a poor first half and kind of just burst my bubble a little bit and just was flat. So manager had every reason to take me out of the team. 
Um, happens in football. Had a couple of you know below average performances, and then it's up to me to try and get back in the team. The the boys, I think they won uh, the hardest field at home, and then the Reading away, so I had no complaints. Um, so I just got I got to keep working. We've got a lot of attacking options, um, you know, with Balassi, Mendes, and Kebs coming in. Um, so I just got to buy my time and try and get back in. Obviously, it helped scoring in the week. Um, but hopefully, I get back in the team and, and, and push on again. Obviously, you mentioned the Brentford game. I mean, how, how, how do you react after a game like that where obviously you could have got a hat trick, to be fair, you know, um, and they weren't like, um, yeah. like difficult yeah. chances? They, Thanks. they were. Thanks for reminding me, buddy. Really <laughs> kind, yeah. were, to be fair, they, they were sitters. I think anyone would have expected you. No, no, not, not because you're. You know, um, could you could you have scored them? Probably not. No, <laughs> I probably wouldn't. But do you, do you get what I mean? It's like we nah, tend to yeah. miss opportunities like that. I mean, how do you react to a game like that? Because obviously, they were chances which you, you'd expect to score, really. Well, yeah, um, that's why strikers get the big bucks, I suppose. Um, you know, if you score, you're a hero. If you if you miss, you you're hated. <laughs> um, so. It's difficult, like, obviously, the, the thing is, I'm obviously trying to score them goals. I'm, I'm in them places. I'm reading the game. I'm, I'm trying to get them in. Obviously, the first one, I think, comes back off the post and it's my right foot. Just didn't get good contact on it. Second one, I hit it well and goalie saves it and it's a bit like, you hit it anywhere else you score. And then I had that header and I just kind of thought, well, that's that really. It's not my day, is it? So, but you just, it's difficult, obviously. You... you Things people need to remember is you're doing your very best to score or you're doing your very best to win games. You're working hard. It just was one of them days it just wouldn't go in. I could have been out there for three hours. I probably wouldn't have scored. You probably you probably had more chance of scoring from where you were. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, obviously, and, that, and then we lost and we lost 4-1. Just a bit of a kick in the um, balls, really, isn't it? And then Jez Dunn wants to know who's the best player you've played alongside at Borough. At Borough? Yeah. Uh, I have to say my 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 buddy, Paddy McNair. Paddy McNair. What, what is it about Paddy? Because obviously the first season, it was the same first season as you, couldn't get into the team under Pulis. And then Woodgate comes in and plays him centre mid and was one of our best players last season and has yeah. continued it again this season in centre defence. What's been... The difference, do you think? Um, well, he, did, he didn't get opportunities under Pulis, so it was mm. difficult, obviously. I think I remember when I came as well, and he, I think Paddy was playing like right back maybe, or he played in a cup game right back and stuff. Yeah, I think he, he was brought as a right back, right wing back cover. Uh, so it's difficult. <clears throat> it's difficult for a player. I mean, you don't play for four weeks and then the manager goes, right, come on, you got, we've got a cup game, so we'll give lads that haven't been playing minutes, but we'll go and put you right back, Paddy. It's just a bit like, well, how was it? Uh, that's not me. Obviously, he's not com- going to complain because he wants to play football. So he plays, but you're not going to see the best out of him. Whereas under Woodgate, um, obviously playing Northern Ireland with Paddy, he plays in that eight position next to me. Um, that's that's his strengths. And obviously he performed and the fans saw what Paddy was was about. It's just like everyone at Middlesbrough, like all the players at Middlesbrough Foot Club, we're, they're all good players. It just depends... Certain managers get the, the best out of certain players. Obviously, Woodgate got the best out of Paddy there. Um, then this gaffer come in, he just dropped into the centre half and, and just carried on. But yeah, he's I love Paddy uh, on a personal level as well. So I'm going to have to say Pads. Next question is from uh, well Nathan Rayner. It's quite a similar uh, kind of questions. It's about Paddy, and he says, "Who's better at golf, you or Paddy?" It's the Paddy McNair show again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Paddy is very good. Well, Paddy plays off nine now. Um, if like whoever's watching the like golfing terms, his handicap's nine. I play off 12, but we do a lot of um two v twos when we, when we do get to play. So me and Paddy are partners. Um, and we're 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 good partnership. We take we take boys on and take a little bit of money off them. <laughs> so who's better? Typical football answer, you kind of avoid the question and yeah. Yeah, because I'm not going to admit it. So, <laughs> you, math. I'm not going to admit it. So, so you basically agree that Paddy McNair is a better golfer than George Savile? As a part, as a partnership, we're very good. But as 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 individuals, who's better? Yes, he's got a better <laughs> hand. <handicap. laughs>
Next question is from um, Adam McCaddy and Tom Lane asked a similar question. Um, and it's who's your best mate at Borough? Or Tom Lane says who's your three best mates at Borough? So you can either choose. It's kind of an air show, you're right. Jesus. Um, yeah, obviously me and uh, boy everyone now saying his name so much. Obviously we're, we're really close. We go away to Northern Ireland together. We play together. We play golf together. We do everything together. So... Hides is already, already really close. Um, and another one, I, you know what, me and Tav, we got on really well. Um, I, I really like Tav. We get on, we're close. We sit on the bus together when, obviously, when we was allowed. We play games together in terms of, you know, on the bus and the iPads and stuff. And got a very sem- similar sense of humour. So I'd, I'd put Tav up there, someone I, I like spending time with. So obviously you and Tav had that little eye celebration recently. What's what's that all about? A lot of people have been asking what that um, kind of means. Oh, this yeah, yeah. The fingers ear. in your ears, sorry. Uh, yeah, fingers in your ears. Yeah. Um, so obviously before the social distancing and stuff like that, we were we played um, a game called Parcheesi on the iPad. Okay. So some people know. So we played 2v2s and obviously me, Tav, uh, Mark Bowler and Patrick Roberts would play it. And we did 2v2s. And obviously when one team... Long story short, but when one team won and the other team lost, there was arguments and people would talk. So the winners would always do that, as in like I'm not listening to it. And it just came into, made a bit of a meal out of it, and then eventually we also like would do it, would do it on the, if one of us scored, we're together, we'd, we'd do it as a celebration because obviously we weren't allowed to. Well, we're not meant to be hugging when we score, so we did the social distance celebration. And you had another celebration against uh, Birmingham uh, where you and Jed did something. What what was that about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so we did the uh, we do boxes. He's not gonna lie, he's saying this. We do boxes before training, and you two people will go in the middle and you and you play it around. And um, Amp Amp uh, Dyke still, he obviously was in the middle this week quite a lot, which he was not gonna like that. But um, we, we you know, this thing when if you do it below your waist, they look at it and you get a free jab. So we kept doing it on the floor because we said he kept dropping his season ticket in the box because he kept going in. So we just had a little bit of banter like that. And obviously, Jed was there when <laughs> when I scored, so we just did it. So, do you, do you enjoy them that, that type of football? Obviously, uh, the, the, the fun side of football because obviously people think it's you know serious and you obviously got to try and sort of win. And lots of pundits have um, said stuff like they don't like the Jesse Lingard and Pogba and them type of celebrations. But I quite like that fun side of football. Are, are you an advocate of that fun side or does it have to always be serious? Um, I mean, time to have fun. Time to have fun. I like the, who is it? The, who scored the West Ham? And the- Lingard and the guitar celebration and all yeah. of that. So like yeah. Lingard and that uh, Declan Rice and them boys all... All you know, when they scored, when they went two and up against Spurs, yeah, I, I love that. That's, that's part, like, you score a goal, you're happy, you want to celebrate. Like, I, I have no problems with them. Obviously, when time to be serious, time to be serious. But, you know, if you're equalising, you need to get the ball out of the net, you get it. Uh, time to enjoy you got to enjoy those moments. Yeah, of course you do. Um, next question is from Chris Gibbon, and he asks, um, who's your dream midfield partner? Dream midfield partner? Got to be Paddy McNair. <laughs> Paddy McNair? <laughs> Above Kevin De Bruyne, above no, Kevin De Bruyne, really. Uh, my dream midfield partner would have to be, yeah, would love to obviously play someone with like Kevin De Bruyne, um, uh, Angolo Kante. So he does all the dirty work, and you can just attack. Yeah, but I don't, I don't mind doing the dirty work. I'll do the dirty work for uh, for De Bruyne, and he can go. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah I don't mind doing that. Yeah, it's got to be. Um, it's got to be one of them, isn't it? Elite, elite midfielders. Yeah. Um, Connor Martin asks, "Are you human or just a goal machine?" <laughs> I am human. Yes. I'm um, human. I like if you. You can call me goal machine. I, don't, I like that. <laughs> MTG Sav, whatever, and goal machine. I don't mind that. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and then next question is from Joe Scott, and he said, "At what age did he overtake his old brother in footballing ability?" <laughs> Jack actually replied to your brother Jack. He replied to it saying, "You know, come on, let's be serious now." Uh, he he's basically yeah, suggested that oh, maybe so maybe you, you've never overtaken him. Yeah, no, Jack. Obviously, I've got two brothers, but Jack played with me. Um, he 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 did well. He was playing and he played in the, in the football league and stuff, and just wasn't. Just I just don't think it was for him. So he ended up he's coaching now and stuff. But when did I overtake him? 
you know what? I'm going to be nice to my brother. He'd always had way more ability than me. Always, always, always had more ability than me that he just did not. And no, he just, football, you have to make sacrifices. I'm just not sure he wanted to, just not sure he fully wanted to do it. So there wasn't any like real jealousy when you made it and, and, and he didn't. Because I know sometimes it's like when, when no, you've got no, siblings that no, are no, trying no, to do the no. same thing. No, 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 not at all. He's my, I, honestly, I, he's probably my biggest fan. He, like, he's in America now, but before before he was in America, he'd come to every Northern Ireland game, travel with my dad and my, um, my partner and my friend. Like, he would, they would travel to everywhere to watch me. He would come to, like, he, he now he gets up when we have a game at three o'clock in, in the morning, uh, in the afternoon or midday kickoff, whatever. He's up in America. He's eight hours behind. He's up six o'clock in the morning watching me and stuff. Seven o'clock in the morning, he's straight up watching. He, he absolutely loves it. Biggest fan. Biggest fan. I thought I thought your your, your dad's your biggest fan because he's there, home, away, everywhere. Yeah, he is as well. I suppose. Yeah. Like he, you got you met my dad a few times, haven't you? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's missing the football as well. Um, so the first two people I want to see in this in the in the Riverside is you and my dad. <laughs> you sure about that? Yeah. Two people. <laughs> Because that's the thing. Obviously, there's, there's no fans, so obviously, um, it, it probably is different for you. Because not just means no fans; it means your family and friends can't be there. I mean, how influential has your dad not just been in your football career, but in, in your life? It's difficult. Yeah, it's difficult. Obviously, I, I do go back to it. Like, we're all in the same position, so it's difficult for everyone across the board. Like, just because I play football doesn't mean it's more difficult or less difficult. Like, of course, like we've just obviously uh, had a little baby girl six months my dad hasn't been able to come and see her so things like that is really difficult um and like being away he would come up to, the, to watch the game he'd stay for the weekend we'd have family time and then he'd go back to back to work monday morning so that aspect yeah like that i miss that like obviously i miss that a lot um but we are obviously all in the same situation even if i was at home i wouldn't be able to see my family and stuff because of the rules and social distance and so I'm um, just I'm looking forward to just as much as you are and the next one the next person just obviously want to just get back to normality and try and get some get you guys back in in, in, the, in the stadium and Thomas Hare wants to ask uh, what how much has changed since uh, Warnock uh, took charge has the mentality of the squad changed um, yeah, probably a bit, bit more belief um, with, with the squad um, we was Obviously, last year was in a diff- difficult moment. Um, and we, I don't know, last season could have gone differently in terms of, I remember we played Luton and Brentford and we drew and then lost and then lost, I think. Mm. We we were playing well, I remember, mm. we, and we should have won the games. And obviously, the championship, championships, like, it's like if you lose a few and then you start feeling the pressure a bit and then you start to revert to different style of football that I think Woodgate was trying to make us play more football. Mm. So we was in a difficult moment and it kind of, it was tough. It was tough for all of us. But obviously now I think, yeah, the belief is back in the squad. Um, he's brought a few good players in in, in January. We, we didn't get, I don't. I think the manager didn't open where he didn't get the success he wanted in the summer in terms of how many he wanted to bring in. But we managed We managed well, we coped well, we did, we've done well up until now. Um, so hopefully we can just have a good last 12 games, really, just see where it takes us. I mean, I think quite a few pundits or people have not really don't really fancy us, written us off a little bit. So I quite, I quite like where we are. We're sitting quite nice. Just if we can get, everyone knows, if you get a little bit of form towards the end, pick up back-to-back wins, you never know. You never know. I'm not saying we're going to, but you never know. Uh, next question is uh, from Chris Edwards. Who has the best crack in the squad? Uh, okay. I don't know. Do you think? Yeah. No, of course not. Um, who's who do I find funny? Who do I find funny? The Jeezy, huh? yeah, Jeezy's funny. The media. Guy. Jeezy, Jeezy's decent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't laugh. With, we don't laugh with him though. We just laugh at him. At him. <laughs> <laughs> good crack. Uh, Yannick's coming. He's got good crack. And Cabano, they've come in good crack. Um, Tav, he's got he's got good banner as well. She, like, lo- yeah, loads. Of, let's say all the boys are together. Good crack, isn't it? 
Yeah, Amph has no crack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. He's just yeah, he's yeah. quiet. He, he's quiet. He's a good kid. Um, yeah, no, Tavs, he's got good crack. Um, Yannick and Cabana, them boys, they're funny. When they get together, they, they do make me laugh. Them two will get together with like uh, Brett and Chuba and them boys. They're funny when they, they get all excited. Um, they're good to listen to. So, yeah, no, as you said, the morale is, is good. It's ledge. 